Hello traders, it's Tuesday, September the 20th. This is John Kicklider, Chief Strategist for DailyFX.com. Here to give you your FX market wrap-up for this opening 24 hours of trade this week, as well as an outflow what we can expect in the 24 hours ahead. Now we are going through a relatively quiet period because realistically anticipation is being drawn forward. Our views of what's going to be market moving and what we want to align to, taking a trade long or short doesn't matter, it's always going to be curtailed by a lack of conviction because we are awaiting something far more prominent with a, a high degree of potential market movement. And of course what I'm referencing here is the rate decisions that we have on Wednesday. Not just the Fed, the BOJ as well, and to a far lesser extent the RBNZ, but these two particular events explain or uh, define the extremes of monetary policy from dovish to hawkish and they represent the effectiveness of an entire pillar of financial stability and economic activity that is coming under increasing scrutiny and has certainly started to find itself destabilized uh, whether we're referencing something like uh, the stability of the uh, global equity market like the SBY as I like to reference for that or uh, we see exchange rates no longer obeying the influence of these major policy authorities, as is the case with the yen as well as the euro. All right, big, high-minded topics, and if you want to look at it from a trader's perspective, trend and volatility are going to be defined by these two events in particular, which means that if I take any trades uh, between now and then, I'm going to have at least a significant spillover impact. It's very difficult to get away from something of this magnitude uh, because its its scope is so wide. And that's true of not just something right in the direct blast like dollar yen, as absolutely is, uh, but generally anything dollar-based is going to feel that. Anything yen-based is going to absolutely feel that, obviously. But then we get into things like risk trends. You're not going to be able to escape the influence and importance of the Fed as it uh, contemplates a tightening against many of its counterparts. You're not going to escape the impact of the BOJ as it defines how much are central banks capable of achieving. And that is very important for sentiment. So whether I'm talking about uh, U.S. equities, I'm talking about uh, Japanese equities, Nikkei 225 here, uh, or I'm looking at something like the high yield or emerging market ETFs, all right? Those things, they get further afield, but are still risk-centric. All of these are going to have an influence. And yes, this is also true for you uh, oil lovers. It is definitely going to impact oil as well. So anything that we take between now and then, it has to be filtered against the uh, stress test of what does the BOJ and the Fed mean to this particular asset or this currency pair or whatever it is. It's going to have some uh, influence uh, at the very least a moderate level. You can get to certain currency pairs that perhaps minimize that exposure. Aussie Kiwi would be one of the on, on that list. However, that also faces the R, B, and Z rate decision, so it's not even like I can escape it uh, through this pair, nor uh, I think actually a little bit more attractive is the Kiwi CAD, uh, but again, Kiwi is going to have a pretty distinct influence or uh, test from the R, B, and Z rate decision. Definitely going to see some potential volatility from that. All right. A trade opportunity, but I'm looking for opportunities between now and then. I'm not trying to just uh, sit here and plot my uh, pattern or my approach after the data comes out. Of course, I'm going to do that, but might as well uh, hold off on that until the circumstances are actually in play. For now, my interests are trading conditions I see right before me, and that is restraint. That is a lack of conviction and momentum. So something like the S&P 500 or the spiders uh, have not been able to uh, mount a significant follow through. It makes sense that we are waiting for something like the Fed rate decision on Wednesday. All right, sentiment positioning as a uh, reflection of the confidence for monetary policy is incredibly important. This is the comparative monetary policy. We have to remember what uh, monetary policy itself has been able to accomplish and maintain. High level of stability, which is the total stimulus here, versus the volatility index, which is a sense of fear. 
The lower the sense of fear, the more encouragement there is for investing, and that has indeed translated into more stimulus, higher equity prices. But how, for how long? It goes back to the effectiveness of monetary policy. No, it's not just the Fed. It's the collective influence of these major central banks. So the Fed might be pulling on the strings, uh, pulling back a little bit the punch bowl. But these extreme easers are the ones that really are the litmus test for keeping stability in the global markets. They are the rudder. And if they falter, it really doesn't matter what the Fed does anyways. All right. And of course, the BOJ and ECB can be as, as successful as they could potentially be, although their uh, effectiveness is in the gutter at this point. Uh, but if the Fed were to trigger uh, instability and lack of confidence and remind us that we are uh, really reaching far for extremely little return, that will upend the balance as well. So it's a very finely tuned and uh, fragile uh, situation that we're currently dealing with in our trades. If you are a medium to long term trader, it is very important to take in uh, an assessment of balance or hedge uh, or throttle back on some of the exposure, whether that be through a notional exposure, meaning really massive long uh, spider position, or whether that's thematic, meaning you shouldn't be long, uh, let's say, uh, US equities, global equities. Uh, emerging markets, high yield, uh, risk-oriented commodities, because they all have a positive risk correlation. And as the popular saying goes, when markets sell off under uh, pressure, uh, correlations tend to go to one. And as we talked about over the past weeks, a lot of our preferred safe havens are not acting the way that we would expect them to. The VIX, uh, which many people have flocked to for good reason, is uh, acting as it would be expected to, but clearly there's a lot of speculative appetite here which is warping this. There's also a ton of speculative ap activity in treasuries. So treasuries are not acting in the inverse capacity to something like equities that they would expect to, uh, expect to be or as they have in the past. All right, so really think about your exposure as we head into this event risk. If we don't get an implosion, you can always get back in into your long uh, risk positions. Uh, a lot of people obsess over the entry and getting back and getting out and getting back in. They think, oh, I lost my great entry. It's still the same position. It's just a continuity. Uh, if you can get over the fact that in the in, in the trade platform, it does not necessarily uh, cover you from the entry that you got in the first phase you will be much better off. You'll be able to proactively manage that position and get out of a potential high-level risk. If you can avoid it, might as well. Right? It's not, as I said, as easy uh, to hedge as it has been in the past. So in the meantime, what are we going to do? All right, Lots of potential trade uh, opportunity comes uh, Wednesday after. But what do we do between now and Wednesday? Just sit here and twiddle our thumbs? Absolutely not. We look for opportunities that can uh, reasonably play out within the time frame that we have, within the capacity of the market conditions that we have. I would expect, and this is often the case, that heading into major event risk, that uh, activity levels will diminish. So activity levels being the S&P 500, maintaining its range, uh, volume tapering off, uh, things like uh, VIX or volatility uh, easing back a little bit. All right. Now, that means lower range, smaller swings, but there are still opportunities. For myself, I still only have my Aussie USD long. However, the uh, swing that we've had uh, to open up this new trading was a nice jump forward, hit my first target, so I trailed up my stop to break even, and uh, I'll see if it can manage a greater percentage of this range, but obviously the closer we get to Wednesday, uh, the more at risk this is, and I do not want to get uh, too, uh, too exposed. So this is within a general capacity, although if I were only trying to start trade it now, I certainly would be hands off because I'd be looking for a move that was perhaps too uh, uh, too big for what the liquidity conditions are going to be able to pri provide. Uh, further, uh, we are now off the uh, technical extreme, so it probably doesn't offer the same level of risk reward capacity. Dollar CAD is also within that grouping. All right, will we be able to get a swing back down towards 128, 12850? Probably not. Not between now and uh, pre-Fed. 
After the Fed, yeah, we can get a break above 133, and we can get a very significant move below 131, given the proper context. But for now, if you're looking at something like the dollar CAD, don't look for a range like this. Certainly don't look for a range down to 125, but rather look for the range that has been carved out over the past four or five trading days. That might be tight for many people, all right, but it's consistent, and it's well within the capacity of the market to move. If that is too small, stay on the sidelines. These are not uh, opportunities right now for big hardy swings. We have to wait until that event risk crosses the wires and then get the lay of the land. I still see interest in Euro USD, however I'm not particularly keen on the technical boundaries. I guess you can make a case for uh, the 111.25 level, but given how restrained it is in the normal curse course of activity, I really wouldn't be expecting too much significant from this uh, in this lead up to this high level of interest. Pound dollar and euro pound are still very attractive to me after that very remarkable uh, post EU 27 remarks on the Brexit. We certainly did get the sterling tumbling, uh, but that move is going to have to be taken in context. We need uh, next steps. Data will continue to have some influence here, but I think that the language is starting to carry more weight than the data itself. Why? Because now we're getting into the positions, the general positions for negotiation. Uh, as it was suggested by Tusk, who spoke to Theresa May, it seems like the UK is going to trigger uh, in January and February, so we still have months before we actually uh, get in that position. So we need to see what the approach is going to be from both sides. Uh, a little bit Goldilocks still assumed from the UK, and a little bit uh, uh, vague and uh, certainly lacking for a consistent line of negotiations from the EU27 side. So uh, still a lot to clarify, but the longer that we go uh, without it uh, really uh, devolving into he said, she said, and arguments and uh, threats, this is probably going to benefit the British pound a little bit more. So. Something like the Euro Pound can get away from a Brexit BOJ combination, but we are definitely have to following uh, the Brexit conversation. The data that we have on the docket has not done much in the way of uh, guiding us. The UK housing data was an improvement. Uh, the docket over the next 24 hours is light for Euro UK consideration. Wednesday does have an economic survey uh, from economists measured by Bloomberg. Very important because they do take some very interesting questions, although not particularly a market moving. Many of these proprietary indicators are not. Then we're going to get in the Euro side of things with the economic bulletin and very important here, the first of the European system systemic board, uh, risk board conferences, which you can bet they're going to be talking about Brexit and what the follow-up might uh, mean for the Euro area. Uh, so that's going to be very important for something like the Euro pound. Uh, do keep that in mind. This is potentially a, a head and shoulders pattern, and I like it as such, uh, but this is no assurance that the right shoulder is going to form. Pound dollar is also interesting. It has a similar head and shoulder like appeal to it, but obviously the shoulder cannot be higher than the head or it defeats the purpose of the pattern. Uh, this is still within a context of seeing a broad range, however, well within sights of the Brexit, or sorry, of the Fed. So don't treat this lightly. And of course, I am still uh, enamored with pairs like pound Aussie, uh, pound CAD, which is good for most instances or most uh, scenarios, bullish or bearish, and pound key, which I have more of a preference for the long term, off of that record low. All right. Now, there are other options out there, uh, but they are just so short term. Uh, and by the time I uh, cover them and release this video, they're probably going to have come and gone. So. If you are not a short-term trader, you're not comfortable with it, uh, it's probably be best to be on the sidelines unless you have very strong convictions of the outcome of this upcoming event risk and uh, you uh, feel that you have the right risk-reward scenarios and everything filtered. I do not have that level of conviction. I don't know what the Bank of Japan and the Fed are going to do, much less do I know uh, on the offset what the market's going to respond to these events. I have an uh, inclination, and I will discuss those in the strategy videos, BOJ Today, and the Fed in the strategy video tomorrow, but uh, 
there's not enough asymmetry here. There is not enough uh, clarity in their positions and in the market's interpretation for me to make that preemptively. So I much prefer uh, to be sidelined on those big positions. And in the meantime, the short-term trades, my only one at the moment being Aussie USD, I'm going to uh, evaluate very, uh, very cautiously and take it well uh, off well before I get into uh, the gravity of the lead up to those particular events. All right, so keep an eye on these markets, trade them cautiously, uh, and prepare, because we are going to be leading into some very substantial event risk. We'll do our next rundown of these markets tomorrow. Until then, I wish you good luck trading out there.